New Zealand Dairy Farmer is proudly brought to you by Hanson Products, providing Kiwi farmers with water system solutions for over 50 years. Welcome to New Zealand Dairy Farmer. This week, the team has travelled to Christchurch to visit the Lincoln University Dairy Farm. We'll be speaking with farm manager Peter Hancox about practical application of some of the innovations that come out of the farm, and we'll talk to Ron Pallo, the South Island Dairy Development Centre Executive Director, about being at the leading edge of precision dairying. What's the size of the farm, Peter? Uh, the farm here is 160 hectares. Um, we have two blocks, um, six, 80 hectares on the north, what we call our north block, and 80 hectares on the south block. Um, separated by quite a busy, busy road, but we do have an underpass that connects the two together. Right, and how many cows are being milked this season? Uh, this season we are milking 6.30 at peak um, and still milking 6.28 now. Right, and uh, how have those cow numbers built up over the years? Um, they've actually decreased a bit in the last three years. Um, two years ago we peaked at milking 670 cows um, and like um, Last year we, we pulled that back to 6.30 and this year we, we're doing 6.30 as well. What was the thinking behind that, uh, concentrating on more production per cow? Yes, um, well we were given the challenge of um, getting more production out of this farm while, while holding, holding our environmental footprint and the models that we ran uh, were showing that we needed to drop cow numbers, uh, which um, we did from 6.70 to 6.30, so it doesn't sound a lot but it did drop them and it actually increased per cow production. What sort of constraints do you have working as a demonstration farm uh, by way of having a lot of farmers visiting and farmers having input into the sort of uh, management techniques that you're using? I wouldn't call them constraints. I think um, it's very supportive of um, local farmers and that. They're um, very interested in what we're doing here and I think that's what drives the way that we run this farm. And um, we do get, like in the past, we've had pressure put on us to run a nil induction farm. Um, you know, look after the environment is what all farmers are doing, but those, yeah, those constraints probably make us look for better ways to do what we do, so yeah, definitely. And what about your background? How long have you been here on the farm? Uh, this, I've just about done my eight seasons, so eight seasons now on this farm. Oh. Um, and what's been some of the most interesting work that uh, you've been involved in uh, in your time here? Um, I think it's just driving production per hectare is um, through one way or another. Obviously, um, the way we use grass without bringing supplements in I think is um, very good, like grass is our cheapest form of feed for the cows and actually you know, showing that we can, it can be done um, through very good high quality feed. Right. Yeah. And uh, you've got a regrassing program uh, in order to produce that quality feed? Yes, um, just like the, the cows genetics are improving, we're, we're expecting grass genetics to improve as well so um, currently we have a running a 15% annual um, turnaround of pasture, which um, we have 21 pastures of our paddocks on this farm, so we're looking to re renovate about three of them a year. So, you know, we're, one of the drivers of this farm is to grow as much grass as we can and feed the cows as well as we can. And with regrassing, has that involved you looking at new species and perhaps giving them a bit of a trial before local farmers have? Um, not necessarily. We'd expect the grasses we grow here to have actually been trialled or farm and produced the goods. So. We, we want to be you know, at the leading edge of um, technology, so we want them to be already proven and hopefully do the job for us. And what's uh, been some of the best species that uh, you've been able to utilise here? Yes, um, probably uh, the Beely, which is a tetrapoid, um, very good. Um, on its own it's probably not so good, so we have started to use a mix of um, Beely and Trojan, which we're finding a bit better, as because of the tetrapoid they tend to open up as a pasture. So. Having the diploid in with the tetrapoid seems to give us a better dense of pasture. And they've worked all right through the dry period this year? Yes, no, most definitely. They hold on very well. Oh. Yep. Can you tell me a bit about your uh, grazing management? Uh, what sort of round length you're uh, having at different times of the year? Yes, um, obviously in spring, just coming out of winter, we, we're on quite a slow round, so we generally do about a 45 day round, trying to, um, until sort of feed demand starts meeting the cows' demand. So to about uh, mid-October when we were on that longer round and then we generally on a 21 day round right through to approximately now or even the end of March. So that's just eating the feed growth so we generally get um, fairly good growth through our summer period. And then from about an hour on we'll push out into the late autumn for about a 30 to 35 day round. And what about your fertiliser regime? Uh, yes, we're 
pretty much um, just trying to use maintenance fertiliser to hold our pea levels around about that 38. Um, the farms over the years build it up to that, to that level, the Olsen pea. So we're just basically holding um, part of the precision dairy farming that we're doing now. We're actually sub um, testing every paddock. So instead of treating the whole farm and using an average for the farm, we're actually individual paddocks. We may increase some of the um, fertiliser, put some capital fertiliser on some paddocks just to increase the fertiliser, uh, the pea levels in that paddock, so we've got them all pretty level. And what sort of genetics are you using? You're a Kiwi Cross fan? Yes, yes mm. Kiwi Cross DNA. The mm. basis of the herd used to be a Frisian herd. Over the last uh, five, six years, we've been going to crossbreed. Uh, it's sort of getting, we want to get a cow that's probably a bit more on the Frisian side, so going for a, an F10 J6 breed is sort of where we want to stay. That gives us a cow around about 500, 510 um, kilos as a full body weight. And what's your culling policy? Uh, you, you're looking just to cull on production or other traits? Um, yeah, other traits. Obviously mm. with a higher MP rate, it does cut down what other cows we can cull. But um, yeah, just things like hymus, uh, somatic cell count cows, um, drop udders and that sort of thing. Mm. And uh, so you're rearing a number of calves here, so you've got plenty of uh, choice of replacements coming through? Yes, yes. In the past we've, um, we've bred about 25%, but as part of um, dropping our environmental footprint, we want to drop that down to 22% and eventually down to 18% at the time. Right, so that means you're more efficient at that yes. level of yeah, yep. producing the youngsters coming through into the herd. Yes. Yeah. And what sort of uh, calf rearing uh, system are you using? Uh, we just run a calf when they calve, we um, feed them once a day from day one. Um, just make sure that new calves get colostrum. Uh, we get them out in the paddock pretty early, so at 10 days old, we usually get them out in the paddock with shelter and um, start cutting the, the allocation milk back and try to get them on meal as quick as we can. Yep. So as farm manager, how closely do you work with the South Island uh, Dairy Development Corporation? Oh yes, quite closely. Um, mm. They have a big involvement. Obviously, they've got the control of the farm for the university, on behalf of the university. So it's um, a very close relationship. Um, Ron pretty much comes along to our management. Um, every Tuesday we have a management day, and he comes along to that. So, and yep, no, always available to talk to and run by ideas past and that. So very good. After the break, we have a chat with Ron Pallo, Executive Director of the South Island Dairy Development Centre, about increasing the speed of innovation and the application of on-farm technology. Mm -hmm.